Hello there and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. The one thing, the one thing that has happened as a direct result of the pandemic is that more and more of us are working remotely. As you know, individuals in travel, leisure, entertainment and hospitality have been impacted. But now, since more and more workers are working remotely, you know, those who've had the fortune of getting their jobs back, what is interesting is that more and more remote workers could be looking at a very complex very challenging, very frustrating and a very messy tax filing season because tax filing season is getting closer every day. In fact, many remote workers could potentially be looking at double taxation. In a new article published by Bloomberg, and we'll provide you with a link to this article in the description section below, the headline reads, remote workers face higher, messier taxes this filing season. At worst, telecommuters can be stuck with double taxation with two or more states, meaning your home state where, you're, where you reside, as well as your, your state of employment where you work, both the states seeking to tax you for state taxes. Now, keep in mind that in this situation, we all have to pay our federal income taxes. But on top of that, imagine having to pay not one state income tax, but potentially two state income taxes, depending on the state in which you work and depending on the state in which you currently reside. Now, here's just one example. Let's say you have a corporate office in New York. This is just an example. And you work in New Jersey or you work in Connecticut. It's quite likely that New York would want to tax you because New York does tax everyone who's working or who has a corporate office in the state of New York. In fact, the state of New York even taxed the first responders who rushed to New York at the start of this pandemic from other parts of the country because New York, you know, that's just the way New York works. That's just one example. But now in this situation, you could face taxes from both New York and your home state. In other words, you have states competing for your tax dollars. Now think about that for a second. You're working hard to try and make it through this pandemic. Many of our viewers and subscribers are finding it hard to make rent, to keep the lights on, to put food on the table. Now you have on top of federal income tax because tax time is approaching. On top of that, you have state income tax. Now I'm talking about remote workers here, individuals who are earning a paycheck, individuals who are earning a salary. I'm not talking about unemployment income. I have done other videos talking about the tax hit as a direct result of your unemployment income because unemployment income is subject to federal income taxes. So make sure you check out that video. My focus is specifically on remote work in this video. Now, the big problem here is that the rules are very, very complex. Some states require you to pay state income taxes, even if you work there for just a day or two in the entire year. Other states require that period to be longer than 60 days before they tax you. And some states like New York require you to pay state income taxes if your employer has corporate headquarters in that state. So this is a very complex subject and this is state dependent. So my advice to you would be understand that if you are a remote worker, you may be subject to double taxation and therefore your best bet would be to speak with an accountant or speak with a tax advisor to determine if indeed you're subject to double taxation at the time you're filing your taxes. Now, what makes things even more complicated is that there are many employers who don't even know where their employees are working from. So let's say you're an employer in New York. You don't know whether your employee is working from New Jersey, from Connecticut, because everyone's working remotely. It's really hard to keep track of everything that's going on. Now, this is where things get even more surprising. States are filing lawsuits against other states so they can get your tax dollars. Yeah, now think about this for a second. In this climate, we have states now getting into arguments with each other. And this has actually gone up to the Supreme Court, believe it or not. You'll see this headline on your screen from Bloomberg. Supreme Court seeks Biden administration views on work from home taxes. So basically, the Supreme Court is now asking for more guidance from the Biden administration about taxation of remote workers who work from home. And why is this happening? Well, the state of New Hampshire is seeking to go to the Supreme Court directly. And what the state of New Hampshire is doing is trying to sue to challenge the practice from Massachusetts, a neighboring state, because Massachusetts is taxing non-residents who used to work in the state, but now do their job from home. So what happens is you have a lot of residents who are living in New Hampshire who used to work in Massachusetts. And what Massachusetts is saying is, even though you don't live in Massachusetts, we're going to charge you state income tax. You're liable to pay state income tax 
because you used to work in the state of Massachusetts, even though you now reside and work remotely from New Hampshire. This is just one example. And therefore, the state of New Hampshire wants to go to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court is like, eh, I don't know, man, help me out. That is exactly what's going on, folks. There are no rules. This is the wild, wild west right now. In fact, I'll be completely honest. There's a high probability that you talk to your tax advisor and the tax advisor is like, eh, I'm not sure. The reason I'm making this video is to help you understand that you may be subjected to double taxation. I hope you're not, but you may be. And therefore, you need to look out. You need to check with your state. You'll need to check with an accountant. You'll need to follow the articles I'm describing right now. And you'll, be, you'll need to determine what the guidelines are for your specific state. And according to this Bloomberg article, the case, meaning the New Hampshire case, could determine the fate of similar permanent tax laws in New York and five other states. I have talked about New York elsewhere. And now keep in mind, New Jersey and Connecticut are also involved in this. They filed a brief backing New Hampshire, telling the court that they are losing massive sums of money to New York in violation of the Constitution. Think about this for a second. So you have two states, New Jersey and Connecticut, saying, yep, we support New Hampshire because as a direct result of what Massachusetts is doing, we are losing the tax revenue. I mean, if you're a resident and you're working in one state and you're, you know, you, you've been told to pay taxes in that state, you're not going to want to pay taxes to another state, which will result in a decrease in tax revenue to the other state. And states are saying, again, I want to be clear, New Hampshire, New Jersey and Connecticut are, are backing each other, telling the Supreme Court of the United States that they are losing massive sums of money to New York, which wants tax revenue. And they are saying that that is in violation of the constitution. Now to help you make sense of all this, I want our viewers and subscribers to understand that there is on one hand, your state of residence. That's where you live. That's where you work from if you're a remote worker. And on the other hand, there is a state of your employment, meaning where your employer is located. As an example, your employer may have their corporate headquarters where you normally work from. Again, let's just use New York in this example. But you may be working in New Jersey, in New Hampshire, or in Connecticut. All three of those states are telling the Supreme Court of the United States that, hey, if New York is taxing uh, the residents of our state who have their state of residence in our state, that means we're not getting the money. And this is now becoming a major issue because guess what? The state wants your tax dollars. And let's be clear, the stakes are very high for certain states like New Jersey. According to the Bloomberg article, New Jersey estimates that because its residents paid taxes to the state of New York and they now have to credit their residents with the taxes that their residents, meaning the remote workers working in New Jersey, they have to credit their residents the taxes that were already paid in New York. That is going to cost New Jersey as much as $1.2 billion for income paid to New York in the 12 months starting in March 2020. Now, I can tell you one thing for sure. The state of New Jersey, for that matter, any state does not want to lose $1.2 billion. They just don't want to lose it. And before the pandemic, more than 400,000 commuters, these are residents of New Jersey, went to New York to work. Now they are working from home and New York is like, eh, you got to pay us our income taxes. And New Jersey is like, uh oh, we're not getting the money because now we have to credit these residents back because New Jersey has a rule where they credit their residents for taxes paid in another state. Your state, the state that you work in, if you work remotely, may or may not have a rule for crediting you for tax payments made to your state of employment. So that's where things stand, everyone. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As more information emerges, I'll be releasing more content on our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. That would mean a lot to me. That really helps out the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you watching. Please share this video with friends and family. I would appreciate that as well. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.